In part two of our stair series, we're going to talk about by the book, stairways and the international residential code. What does the code book tell us as far as stairs? What are the rules? What's right? What's wrong? So we're going to dive in and as you can tell, I'll have some code references up here. I use the, uh, the uh, again, the IRC. I'll just say IRC for an international residential code. But just basically, what does it say? It says where required by this code or where stairways provided, stairway shall comply with this stuff in section 311.7. And I'm going to bring up some of these as we go. We're not going to cover everything, but just the stuff you need to know in order to determine if that stair in that house is right or wrong. So the stair says, hey, it's supposed to follow what's in the code, but like every good code book, there's always exceptions, right? So let me just share with you in the 2021 IRC, they share us this exception, stairways not within or serving a building, porch, or deck. So if it's, it's the stair, like if it's out there in your yard, these rules don't apply. Okay. So, but there is it there and they do have two more exceptions. Um, it kind of gives us a hint is what the code folks are thinking. Uh, ones that go up to non-habitable attics, they don't have to follow these rules. And if you're going down into a crawl space, if you have a stairway going down there, you don't have to worry about it. Here's one that is serving a deck. This could be a patio, it could be a porch, but here's a stairway that's servicing. So the rules do apply to something like this. Now, here's one that in my book, if I was having to enforce the 21 IRC, this is one, this is the sidewalk right here in the foreground. And you go up and say, well, does the IRC stairway rules apply to this? And I would say using that exception, well, it's not attached to the building. It's not servicing it. It's not, you know, it's not, I would say, I would say no, personally. Um, is it just, it's a sidewalk and it goes to a driveway. It's, it's not within 60 feet of this house that we're about to go through. So that's what they say. Alrighty. So how wide does this thing have to be? Well, again, 31171. Uh, stairways, what? Very simple. 36 inches, three feet. How do we measure it? It tells us in the clear width at all points above the handrail height and below the headroom height shall be three feet. Pretty simple. The clear width of stairways below the handrail height, including treads and landings, shall not be less than 31 and a half. And then if you have two handrails, 27 inches, they throw in there just for good measure. So as you get lower to the stair, up here above the handrail is 36, and then it gets narrower technically down below the handrail. Alrighty, so then going forward, so that's the width. Well, how high, how much headroom do I need in a stairway? Well, they give us a pretty straightforward thing here. Six foot, eight inches. Well, that I'm six foot three. So if I'm sh close to the ceiling, I know I'm checking this. But let's see, you know, how, how do we measure six foot eight when it comes to a stairway? So here's Dave's mythical stairway on the screen here. And we're just going to say, hey, we measure from a plane from the nosings. I put in this red line and that's touching all the nosing. If you could string line a line that's perfect, that just touches the nosings of each step, that's the plane that we measure to. And then we go up six foot, eight inches. Pretty simple. So you don't measure from the back, back here, six foot eight. It's always from the nosing, the very edge. We'll talk more about nosings here in a little bit. What happens though, if you, you do this, sometimes the framer will, instead of having a, a beam on the top plate, he drops the beam. I don't know for whatever reason, but now we've got an obstruction and it's not six foot eight. Yes. A guy like me, I'm going to hit it. So make sure the six foot eight inch rule is consistent from this very first stringer down here, all the way up the stairway and you have six foot eight or more the entire distance. Alrighty, a little more rules, treads and risers. Okay. In our basics of stairs in part one of this series, we talked about treads and risers. That's the thing that we make the stairway out of and treads and risers shall meet the requirements. And we're going to talk about them, but just note the code people are talking about dimensions that I'm about to give you are for the, basically the frame, because it says these dimensions exclude 
carpet, rugs, runners, stuff like that. So we're going to talk about the treads and the risers, just raw lumber. So it says the riser, okay? The thing that goes up and down. That's the riser. It says what? A maximum of seven and three quarters. Never, ever, ever, ever can you have an eight inch riser. It's just, you know, and it's a simple measurement from there to there. Um, you could be shorter. You could have a three inch riser. I don't suggest it, but you know, it says maximum seven and three quarters. So, and then they have all the rules that I'm going to share with you have what I call the three eighth inch rule. And this one, seven and three quarter max, and then the greatest riders, riser height within any flight of stairs, remember the flight of stairs, shall not exceed the smallest one by more than three eighths of an inch. So my first, if, if all the risers, the first few risers I measure are seven inches tall, that's fine. But as I go up, I cannot have a seven and three quarter inch riser. Does that make sense? Because if they're all seven, 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 and the code says I can't exceed it by more than three eighths of an inch within a flight, then I've broken the rule with a seven and three quarter. I can go seven, 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 seven. I can have a seven and three eighths anywhere in there, but I can't go bigger than that. So that's the three eighth inch rule that applies to risers, treads, and nosings that you'll see here in just a second. So the way I measure it, I've got all sorts of neat little gizmos. This one is a painted square that I have, and it's got so seven and three quarters. Guess what the red mark is on my triangle here? That's seven and three quarters, and everything above that is bad. Everything below that line is green, so that's good. And in this case, hey, it's, it's in the green zone. So life is good for this stairway. So there is a note. Some of you guys, you may have open risers. You know, where there is no, no riser there that you could physically drop stuff under there. It's a very beautiful design and some custom homes and such. There is a rule for that. At open risers, openings located more than 30 inches, measured vertically from the floor or grade below, shall not permit the passage of a four inch diameter sphere. So normally I usually see a little block added to the, the tread here so the sphere cannot go through it because Obviously, that's going to be five or six inches, and, you know, that's not four inches. So they'll block it like that. But this rule starts at the 30 inch above the ground. And if you're going up to the second floor, that's going to apply. Uh, so look for that if you have open risers, but it, they can be done, and they're a nice feature to have in a home. Tread. So that's the riser. Now the tread. Remember the thing we step on. Tread depth shall not be less than 10 inches. It shall be measured horizontally between the vertical planes of the projection. Uh, and there's the 3 8 inch rule. The greatest tread depth within any flight of stairs shall not exceed the smallest by what? 3 8 of an inch. So let's look at that. Let's see how the code book tells us we measure that. Now, all that wording about the plane of and that, don't worry about that. You take your triangle and it's from the nosing. You place it up there. All this space in here doesn't count. It's from the nosing up here, that's where you measure from, and then out to the end, obviously, that's the dimension that I'm going to take. It has to be a minimum of 10 inches. Remember on risers, it gives us a maximum of seven and three quarters. For a tread, they tell you oh, it's a minimum. Can you have a 12 inch tread? Sure. So treads, 10 inches. So again, I've got a, a little triangle and I can come in here and I just lay it and notice it's up against the nosing of the step above. And that's where we start on the step below. And that's where we measure to. And before you know it, guess what? Here are my little thing, 10 and a quarter inches. Ding, 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 ding. It works. So again, if you use a two by 12, you're almost guaranteed that that 10 inch will never be violated. All righty. What is a nosing? I mentioned it a few times. I don't, I, I don't mean to keep you in suspense, but a nosing is what? Nosings at treads, landings, and floors, stairways shall have, they shall have this thing, a radius of curvature at the nosing not greater than 9 sixteenths of an inch or a bevel not greater than half an inch. Bevel's like a 45 or so. So, and then it says the nosing projection shall not be less than three quarters and not more than one and a quarter. 
And by now your head's exploding because you're going, man, Dave, too many, what's going on? And then it gives us what then? There's the 3 8 inch rule. So all those nosings and then there, you know, shall not exceed the smallest by 3 8 of an inch. So what does this mean? Let's take a look at another little diagram. And so it says, first of all, we have to have some sort of radius or we can have a bevel. Okay, a bevel, in this case, I just drew a 45, not more than half an inch. And then here, the maximum radius here and here is 9 sixteenths. So pretty tight. And then there's, it says, this overhang here can be three quarters to one and a quarter inches with the 3 8 inch little rule there. So these have to be there. You have to have this little thing here with an asterisk that I'm going to show you in just a second, because of course there's an exception, but this is the way 90% of what you do, it's going to be done. So here we are in action. We've got our treads and our risers, and there's our nosings. They use two by 12s. This worked out perfectly. Beautiful way to go framer. So pretty easy punch out job on this one. So what's that exception I told you about? Well, Again, if you use, for, for example, if you use a 2 by 12, which is 11 and a quarter inches, and you build it like this, notice I don't have nosings. It's flush to the riser. You can do that with a 2 by 12 because I've got what? It's 11 and a quarter inches. The exception says what? A nosing projection is not required where the tread depth is not less than 11 inches. 11 and a quarter is bigger than 11. So you can do this. Again, it depends on the style, maybe the finish, whatever the designer's going for. So, but most of what we're going to see will have nosings. So I bring this up. This is a wood example, but I bring it up because of this example. If you deal with any concrete steps, you know concrete, you're not going to get that little three quarter to one and a quarter inch nosing on the edge of concrete, it'll break off, much less you can't form it up and do that. And you're gonna have what we have here, just 90 degree corners going down and creating a concrete stairway. That's fine. But as we create our stairway, remember when they form it up, they need to use two by 12s for their forms perhaps, or at least measure it out, because these treads here have to be at least 11 inches in order to comply with code because I know there won't be a nosing on these things. So there is one kind of caveat. If uh, I used to do commercial construction and uh, I, you know, they do have pre-made concrete steps that have this little bevel and there is that little thing that creates a nosing type of thing, but you can't really do this in the field pouring concrete steps. So I just show this as an example in case somebody tries to do it. So we've talked about most of the parts and pieces. The code does say, hey, landings. There's just basically two rules for landings and they're in here, but I'll summarize it as this. Th this makes sense. This, the landing has to be at least as wide as the stairway it serves. Well, that makes sense to me. So if this is a Three foot wide stairway, that's a three foot wide landing at least. Four foot wide stairway, four foot wide landing. Pretty simple stuff to follow. And then the other thing they say is, hey, in the direction of travel, I shall have at least 36 inches to go and step off and do what I ever need to do. So the landing, width of the stairway, 36 inches in the way of travel. So that's it, that's part two. Doing it by the book. Stairways, that's what the code book says. And uh, hope you learned some things, and we'll see you on the next video.